Nintendo in the 90s? Yeah, it was a pretty weird time for them. We got a live action Super Mario Brothers movie, a failed attempt at VR with the Virtual Boy, and uh, Donkey Kong came back. Except now he was Jimmy Neutron or something. I don't know, man, the 90s were weird. In the mid-1990s, Donkey Kong was back and leading the video game industry again with his revolutionary new title, Donkey Kong Country. With its unique new 3D pre-rendered graphics, no longer was Mario the face of Nintendo, but it was instead his old rival who stole the spotlight and set a new standard for the entire industry. Though, just like with any hit video game from the 90s, it was only a matter of time before SOMEBODY thought it'd be a good idea to turn THIS into a kid's cartoon. So what do you know? They did just that, with 1997's Donkey Kong Country The Animated Series. <gasps> Now, from what I could gather, Nintendo had pretty much nothing to do with this show. Yeah, I'm, I'm not too surprised to hear that either. Instead, it was French animation studio Media Lab who acquired the rights to produce the show. While not having too much on their resume at the time, the people behind Media Lab were pioneers of motion captured animation. This new technology just felt like a perfect fit to replicate Donkey Kong Country's unique pre-rendered visuals for a TV show. So, a deal was struck and Media Lab went to work. While this series was always intended to be a kid's cartoon, it seems like the writers over at Media Lab had other intentions for this show. According to one of the crew members, the original team of writers apparently handed in scripts that contained extremely crude humor that was not suitable for a kid's show. So they were quickly fired. Without writers, Media Lab turned to Canadian animation studio Nelvana for help with revising the scripts. Since all the original storyboards were already finished, Nelvana had to work around these storyboards when rewriting these original episodes. So, while Nelvana handled the scripts, Media Lab started on the animation. And oh boy, where do I even start with the animation? Well, as you can see, it, uh, it, uh, yeah, it hasn't aged the best. But if you can keep in mind when this series was released, and that it was one of the first fully 3D animated TV shows, then you can start to see how impressive these visuals actually were at the time. Which, if you do go into this show with that kind of mindset, it's kind of cool to think that in the same way that the Donkey Kong Country series introduced us to realistic 3D graphics in our video games, the Donkey Kong Country TV show introduced many of us to proper 3D animation on our TVs. This show, and the games for that matter, gave us a glimpse into the future of what was possible with 3D modeling and animation. And for the time, it was exciting. And yeah, while this did come out after the original Toy Story, it's still pretty amazing that they were even able to achieve these kind of visuals on a much smaller budget than what Pixar would have had. And let's be honest, even Toy Story has some moments that don't hold up too well by today's standards. In terms of plot for this show, it's as basic as you can get for a kid's cartoon. There's a plot MacGuffin in the form of the Crystal Coconut, and it's up to Donkey Kong to protect it from King K. Rool and the Kremlings. Well, now that we got that straight, give your eyeballs a swing over there. It's a magical, it's mysterious, it's the eighth and a half wonder of the world, the Crystal Coconut! As you all probably know, Donkey Kong isn't the only member of the Kong family in this show. Diddy, Cranky, and even Funky Kong make appearances throughout the show, and all are pretty faithful adaptations of their video game counterparts. Except Funky Kong. He just 
kind of looks like he's naked or something. I don't know, he makes me uncomfortable. Candy Kong is also a pretty prominent member of the show, though she's sporting a very drastic redesign, which I'm assuming is because, uh, yeah. Don't know if the original design would have gone over well on a kid's show. Dixie Kong is also here playing the part of Diddy's girlfriend, and yeah, she doesn't really do much. We also have a new member of the Kong family that's completely unique to this show, Bluster Kong. He runs a barrel factory along with Candy Kong because, you know, Donkey Kong? Barrels? Had to shoehorn it in somehow. Bluster Kong is basically the asshole character of the show with absolutely no redeemable qualities whatsoever, and that's pretty much all he is. It's not just Bluster Kong either. All of these characters are extremely one-dimensional and uninteresting. Donkey Kong is your typical strong but dumb hero, Diddy is the stereotypical sidekick, and Cranky is the wise old man character. This is usually fine for a kid's show like this since the fun usually comes from the situations you put these characters in, but even those are completely cookie cutter and uninspired. A typical episode just consists of King K. Rool stealing the crystal coconut and Donkey Kong trying to get it back and usually failing in some fashion. What does give this show some originality though is the infamous musical numbers. Yeah, you can't talk about this show without bringing these up. Each episode has to have at least one of these songs forced in, and they could seriously come out of nowhere. Some of the characters' reactions to somebody just breaking out in song is pretty great, though. Let him save your life and you'll be even, it's as simple as that. So, these musical sections were requested by Media Lab to be included. And I'm not gonna lie, some of them really aren't that bad. You can really tell that some of the voice actors are very talented vocalists. It's just, I personally feel like an animated Donkey Kong Country series wasn't the best venue to show off their talents. Come on, DK, doesn't this sound sweet? No. Surprisingly though, this show actually had a very decent run, with it lasting two seasons for a combined episode count of 40. And this show was fairly popular in many parts of the world, such as France, Canada, and even Japan. The series was so popular in Japan, in fact, that it even spawned a spin-off manga and a collectible card game featuring characters from the show. Nowadays though, this show is mostly remembered ironically for how poorly its animation and visuals have aged over the years. Which is a shame because while this show isn't winning any awards for its characters or plot, you can't deny that it was pretty innovative for the time. It broke the mold and introduced us to a new form of TV animation. Don't get me wrong, this show is awful, but Gosh dang do I respect it for being innovative. But how do you feel about the Donkey Kong Country TV show? Do you feel like it's really as bad as everyone says it is? Let me know in the comments and be sure to leave a like on this video if you enjoyed it. It really helps me out and lets me know that you guys are enjoying this stuff. But yeah, be sure to subscribe so you don't miss any future videos and feel free to check out my other content. I made a video on the Kirby anime, so you know, if you're looking for more videos on video game adaptations, there you go. Uh, but yeah, hope you enjoyed the video and I will see you guys next time. Thanks for watching.